plus the um, mouse wheel of thoughts in episode 5 of the Imagining Story. <sighs> now you remember last week how this for me is like a bad taste in my mouth? Well, I think this week was a lot more better, as this week we focused on um, Bob Iger stepping in as CEO and basically trying to fix everything that had gone wrong for each of the parks. So a lot to cram in. We'll start with Disney California Adventure and the creation of the Cars line. This, for me, was the golden jewel for the park. I mean, when I was there in 2018, I loved this land. It was so amazing, and all the rides they did on it was so great. Amazing. Um, what I loved was the detail they put into it and the work they took. You know, actually studying, ringing its rings. The Route 66, sorry. Actually, um, doing their research into ringing Route 66. All the detail. You really, when you, when you go to Cars Land, when you walk in there, you really do think, feel... As if you are in the actual story, you actually are in Radio Springs. That's what I was saying originally to begin with. Um, it just feels like you're actually there and you're in Radio Springs. It feels like you're, you know, you're in the Flo's Beer Cafe. We did cast their tyres. You actually do feel like you're, you are there. And of course, the big t- ride is called Radio Springs Races. And I loved how we got to see it in detail. Look at how they made or, or this attraction work um particularly designing the, the cars or audio metronics as they refer to it as because if you feel on that ride oh my god it really does look like the cars are actually there it really does look like the cars are actually right in front of you it feels like they actually are right in front of you it's just so amazing it really is absolutely spectacular um and also we just learned a bit more about the uh track system that was used to ha- use particularly for the uh, uh the racing bit so after you've had the storytelling bit because there's we've, we've various races there's like two parts of it there's the storytelling bit which you go through first and that's where you get to meet all the different characters and then you've got the racing bit and oh my god you on when you do it the first time you're not prepared for the g-force you are not prepared for it um it's absolutely zoom it's like whoa he's like you're literally unprepared it's like oh my god it literally hits you in the face it really really does it does but i just love the stunningness of it it's just all the deep and detail it's just amazing that land is such a stunning land and i i recommend it. if you've not visited it yet you need to go visit that that's, and that and so they went about how making each the just attractions like that and pitch all these different land ideas like for example choice of the midway mania which is another uh, idea that got pitched which they focus on. I don't really like that. I don't. I don't think I really did good in that one. Um, and how all these different ideas I got pitched helped to basically save Disney Carnival kind of Adventure and make it have a purpose and for people to actually like it again. It was quite an amazing thing. Work. It's just so brilliant. Stunning the detail. Like it's stunning. Absolutely stunning. So next up, we had a little bit mentioned about uh, retheming old attractions. Now, of course change has to happen in these parks there's constant change all the time um what i loved is how we got to hear about guests initial receptions to this in particular to the haunted mansion and it's a small world those are the two that people took quite big critiques at and we got to see captions of newspaper clippings of quite a lot of oh, nasty action to it. Um, because to a lot of people, these, these, these things mean a lot to you. These words write me a lot to people. Um, and so whenever you hear your hero attacks go to the rehuming, it's never good. You never, it just never sounds good. Um, and you always be oh my god, they're gonna make it horrible. It's not gonna be great as it once was. Um, so yeah, so with Haunted Mansion, we discovered how they added, um, they did there. So, so like Hardy season over, over later it, in, involving the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, so Jack Skeleton. I've actually not seen that film yet. I've heard a, I've heard a song from it, but I've not actually seen it yet. Yet. Um, so they talk about how they did that and all the different things that went into made it suitable for the Hardy season. Um, and everyone was it's a small world, and I actually remember the it's a small world story i remember when that came out i was like oh you're not oh you're not no you're not doing that oh no so it's a small world they basically in added 
Disney characters to it, to the Disneyland version. And I was thinking, oh my god, no. No, please tell me you're not doing that. Please tell me no. No, please tell me. Oh, I actually do remember this, reading the story at the time. Um, although when I went there, when I went there in 2018, I don't recall spotting any of the Disneyland land ones. Any of the Disneyland dolls. Maybe I wasn't paying too much attention. Because I knew this story had happened. And I read it a couple of years back. So when I was in twenty four, right, I need to keep up. And I don't think I did spot any of them. Maybe, I'm, maybe I wasn't paying that much attention. Yeah, but that was a little... But it is a small world. It's so iconic. You can't really... You should never read open to it. I mean, having a Christmas version is, is bad enough, but still. And the last ride I got mentioned about giving a review was um, Pirates of the Caribbean, how they added Jack Sparrow in for the movie and updated it to reflect the uh, the changing times we are in our in our world. And the, the last, so yeah, so that was uh, California. So we've had California got mentioned, we've had had did we have any other mention? Oh yeah we had Hong Kong mentioned about how they were to how they were gonna make it a bit bigger and then Paris gets mentioned. Now in the last two years Paris has not been made in a favoured light and of course I did express my feelings about that on the last plus the last show. Go back and watch it if you dare because because yeah, I tempers do flay. Uh but on this one they talked about the jewel that they brought in that they created under Bob Iger's tenor to at the park, and that is of course Ratatouille. Oh, that's right. This ride actually got announced a, a couple, of, um, quite a couple of years back before the making of it. Um, but in progress at the time of its initial announcement didn't even get that far. And then a couple of years later, the announcement was like, oh, and this time we're actually we're actually doing it, and it's just so amazing. For me, I love this ride. I've done it so many times since it's um, been open. I can't believe it's been seven years already since this attraction first opened. It's just... Wow. I just can't... Couldn't believe it. I just could not. I can't believe how time... Time's already flown by. Um, yeah, so this is amazing, amazing ride. And it is so amazing. Thing. Um, and I love oh there's so many things I love about it. I mean, obviously I'm gonna try I'm gonna try and sum it up because obviously this is about explaining the attraction itself which is obviously for Disneyland and me so I'm gonna we'll do that up. but I'm gonna try and run up here so what I love particularly about Ratatouille L'Aventor Tui Mon Tui Remy okay that's the full that's the full name of the ride in French for me, with Disneyland Paris, if a bride has a particular name in French, I will not try and find the English version. I will literally spend, you know, days, weeks memorising the French in my head, in my head, until I've got it. Because I do love the French language, I love the culture, and I did do French, so, yeah. So the full name of the attraction will give you again is Ratatouille, Le Vento, Tout le monde, Tout de Remy. Why the particular is the, um, all the different technologies going to it. So, the ride is trackless, it's a big, it's a trackless ride, ride. And your vehicle, which is safe for brat, takes a designated um, path. But you still get to stay, see the whole thing, or, or, or whole thing, which means you probably get to take to it in a different way. Um, I love all the, the technical thing and how you actually do feel some of the elements. So, like, for example, if you're going through an oven, you feel the, the warmth of the heat. If you're going to get, if there's going to be water coming at you, you actually get sprayed with the water. You generally feel the effects. Effects. And of course, they've got that brilliant animation sequence, which I can't believe took longer to render than the actual film. That's something we learned about in the uh, in this episode. And I thought, what? So that's my. <gasps> didn't know that. <sighs> which I've been trying to find in all these shows so far. Um, yeah, it's a brilliant attraction. And I do love how they interviewed one of the. Well, the. Um, cat, you know, Imagine it. I love how they interviewed them actually outside the actual attraction because it's a beautiful place. That section is a beautiful section. So I love the tickets how they've captured a French street perfectly. It just catches up really. I just love it. It just it's just amazing. It's stunning, right? 
Right, and it's okay, I can learn more, but I'm summarising because obviously that's sort of borderline on what we do in Disneyland London Me, so you can check that out uh, another um, when, next, when, we, when, we get to, when we get to that episode with me very soon. Um, but yeah, so it's just amazing. So this is kind of like the one good bit we've had about Disneyland Paris. So the first, the previous sets have been sort of been ne ne negative on it. Uh, the this episode, me fire shows you get to see this Empire show in some good light. And the final bit was the announcement of Shanghai uh, Disneyland. So they so they sort of rally us off and saying out, oh, we announced this uh, Shanghai Disneyland, um, which obviously opened in 2016. So that's saying it's fifth year. Wow, I can't believe five years is blowing for that. Whoa, it's in time running so fast. Um, did not really put goes too much in that? It was literally just oh, um, the announcement. So I'm guessing that's what's going to be coming in the um, final episode. Um, but let me try and look up what is coming from the final episode so we've got an idea of what's uh, coming. So <laughs> right, so in episode six, the topics that Rain feature on are. The groundbreaking of Shanghai Disneyland, so we'll so, and so we'll focus a bit more on Shanghai Disneyland to start with. It's basically picking up where episode five left off. Uh, we've got Pandora, the world of Avatar. Uh, just in case you're not too familiar with what that is, that is a ride in is it in in right in the in Florida based on the f uh, film Avatar. Uh, uh, you've got the Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, that is the, uh, basically, in California Adventure, uh, the Hollywood Tower of Terror has got a, has been refeed to Guardians of the Galaxy. And I looked, when I was there, I looked at it, I thought, oh my god, that doesn't, that looks horrible. It's just like, Weird, weird wires being thrown around the tires, trying to not make it look like Hobbit Tower Terminal. You know, you saw Hobbit Tower. I thought, oh my god, that just looks horrible. You should have just done what Paris does with it, does done with hyperspace mounting. Leave the outside the same on the inside. Change it. So we've got that coming up. Uh, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and future upcoming projects. Um, so who knows? Hopefully, they may reflect on the. Um, WWS2, which caused the major fans to watch this CGS Park, um, which obviously is still nowhere near having to be completed its first phase, obviously, due to you know what. Um, so, yeah, so it's going to be a very interesting final episode because obviously, apart from the um, Shanghai Disneyland, which will, which will probably take up the bulk of the episode, um, literally, I've got no idea what's coming up, but I'm actually, but I'm still very much looking forward to watching it, and obviously, can't wait to share my thoughts with you. And that'll be it with the Magic Story. Story that cuts the last. Episode. There's only six episodes. We've episodes, and it's almost at the end. I'll say my my initial thoughts on the whole series as a whole until for next time. So the next half time will be a combination of half this episode, the next episode will be on the episode, and the second half can be. Or maybe because it's a full episode, I'll just, as a separate episode, I'll think about it. I'm actually overall four, so that's something to think about in the box. Um, yeah. So, all in all, I think for me, this episode five was great, and I felt we needed to have some good stuff in it because <sighs> episode four is hard to watch. It's hard to watch, as you will know, that you watched my last plus my last step on that show. Episode four was hard to watch. Um, so it's kind of nice episode to actually hear some of the good things that are happening because Bob Iger did a lot of good in his tenure as CEO. Okay, that's what I'm going to do there today. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you'd like to see more content, then please do click the subscribe button. It takes a few seconds. Once you have subscribed, you're never going to miss a single moment. New content comes out, including brand new episodes of Just the Mouse. And until next time, all for me to say is au revoir. Hello, George Han here. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with all my latest videos. Don't forget to like, send a comment below, and while stick around to watch a few more, go on. I highly recommend it.